Welcome everybody to Unleash the SEO Animal. We're going to talk today about how search can help your site. Um, so again, my name is John Michael Oswald. I go by JMO. Uh, I work at Shipple. I've been there about six months doing search engine marketing. And that involves more traditional SEO, pay-per-click advertising, um, but I'm also a specialist at Google Analytics. I'm kind of our resident web analytics guru since being certified from Google Analytics. Um, and next to me, kind of our guest of honor up here is uh, Matt Inman. Matt's got quite a few titles. He is a developer, has built different sites, different tools for search engine stuff. He is a designer, having done some great quirky quizzes that I'm sure you've probably seen floating around the internet. He's an illustrator of some wonderfully hilarious comics. And he also writes quite a bit. Um, so Matt, why don't you go ahead and share some more about what you do. Sure. Um, so, you know, I know this is about SEO and we're going to talk about that, but uh, the type of SEO I specialize in is something called link bait and it sort of overlaps with viral marketing. Um, so before I get into that though, I want to talk about one of the successes I had and then sort of back, back out from that and explain how I was able to, to make it a success. Um, so about three years ago, I was working at SEO Moz and I wanted to try something different. Um, so I, as a night job, I started building an online dating site just on my nights and weekends. Um, coding it and designing it, and I ended up launching it. Uh, within six months of launch, the, uh, the site had effectively about 100,000 links built to it. Um, if you Googled anything relating to dating, such as um, Houston singles, free online dating, um, Jewish singles, gay San Francisco singles, anything, my site showed up first. And as such, I was able to get a ton of people to sign up for it. Um, I sent two million page views to it in the first six months, and it got acquired by a competitor who I then went to work for doing the same thing I was doing before, marketing it. Uh, two years later, it gets 40 million pages a month. We have over a million members. And um, you know, we, we pushed our way into one of the most competitive markets on the internet. So all through mostly my viral marketing and my link bait, one guy. So, so how did one guy basically build this, this little empire and, and punch his way into this, um, uh, this, this industry where people like Match.com and eHarmony have these massive budgets? And the short of it is, is SEO. Um, I could talk a lot about SEO. It's, it's, it's a complex thing. There are all sorts of, of ways of doing it. But I'm just going to talk about what you need to know to understand my presentation. And that's essentially what SEO is, is you, know, you Google something and someone wants to show up first. SEO is the process of making sure that you show up first. So you pick a word or a phrase, like Houston Singles. Um, one of the ways that you can tell Google that I want to rank first for Houston Singles is you convince the entire internet to link to you talking about Houston Singles. Um, which, you know, obviously isn't something that's easily done. So what link bait is, you put something on your website, um, a piece of content, and you get everybody talking about you. Uh, and so Google says, oh, everybody's linking to me, linking to this guy, talking about, um, I don't know, purple buckets, or online dating, or um, awesome toasters. And suddenly, when people Google those words, you show up first. That's the main goal behind link bait. The, the secondary goal is that with these campaigns that I do, you also, I also get hundreds, thousands, I've seen upwards of, of millions and millions of page views to my, my pages. So that's a great opportunity to put Mingle2, my dating site, in front of lots of people. So with Mingle2, I started out with quizzes. Um, I made one called How Geek Are You? It takes a few seconds to take it, and it tells you you are 10% geek, you're 100% geek. Um, people really, really like this. It built a lot of links back to me. The real trick to it, though, um, that's, that's something that I'm sort of it was a form of, of link bait and SEO that no one had ever done before that I, that I started was when you take the quiz, um, this is the, these are the results you see. These results are actually for a different quiz. This quiz was called How Many Five-Year-Olds Could You Take in a Fight? And um, this thing, I know it's weird, but this thing was massive. It took our servers down six times from the traffic <laughs> we got. Um, but what you do is when you finish this quiz, you, it tells you you could take 27 five-year-olds in a fight. And I give you this little snippet of HTML code up here. You embed that into your blog or website. And if you look in the lower left at that orange arrow, um, it links back to me with the keywords free online dating. So I was able to build upwards of 600,000 links doing this with the anchor text I wanted so I could rank for pretty much whatever keyword I wanted. Um, this is another example of, of some uh, bait I made. This is not a quiz. I created a fake dating site called Zombie Harmony um, that was one page long. It's just a funny thing about a dating site for zombies. Massive amounts of traffic, massive amounts of links. It was an entertainment weekly. And if you actually Googled certain dating-related keywords, like free dating site, this site, my fake one, was outranking Match.com and eHarmony, which is a <laughs> fake site. So that was, shows you the power of what you can do with some of these, these viral campaigns. Uh, I made this comic, 10 
reasons it would rule to date a unicorn. Um, again, it's about dating. Millions of people read it. I got links. And people began to associate. And if you want to see the rest of these, by the way, check out, um, just Google it or look up MatthewInman.com. I've got tons of stuff on my site you can follow along. Um, again, and you know, more important links, I got to put Mingletoo's logo in front of this. And all these people liked my site because they'd seen these. Another one called Types of Bad Kissers, again, kind of dating related. Um, <laughs> this, okay, so this was one that I did. This was one of the last ones I did. I don't know if anybody has ever seen this before. Um, this was one of the most popular comics I've ever made, and it was great. I loved it. Um, but the one thing that was wrong with this was that it wasn't about dating. It's about cats. Um, so. I put the Mingle 2 logo in front of tons of people with this. Like everyone saw, oh, Mingle 2 is awesome. They make all these cool comics. Conversely, though, I didn't really rank for anything. I'm not, my, my site's success doesn't bank on ranking for how to tough your cat spawning and kill you. So what I learned is that through, through various um, things that I did, I, I got really aggressive with this, and I started ranking for keywords like payday loans, cash advance, uh, all sorts of EDU verticals. They're very lucrative, but they're very spammy. So Google ended up actually giving me a penalty and kicking my site out of the search results. Um, it came back. But what I, what I learned through that was that Google likes you to keep it on topic. Um, so I can't make zombies, or I can make zombies as long as I make them relate to dating. Um, I just can't have fighting five-year-olds relating to payday loans. Google does not, that's not okay with them. So this is a bunk bed site that I partnered with about a year ago, and they needed a way to build links for bunk beds. So in this case, I literally attached a Velociraptor to a bunk bed. And within a month, we were ranking number one for bunk beds. And we've continued to rank for that the entire year. And we actually just sold that website last week. Um, and this is three hours worth of work. I mean, this, I drew a Velociraptor and I wrote a bunch of questions about wrestling with dinosaurs. You have? Okay. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty popular. So, so that's a great example. If you have a commercial topic and you attach something freaky weird to it, and you turn that into links and you turn that into a, a business. Um, this was one I did uh, where it plays a sound that only uh, younger people can hear. It's a little inaudible sound. And um, if, you, if, if someone says, oh, I can hear it, they want to blog about it, so I give you the HTML code. And you link back, and I was able to rank number one for a keyword called uh, train horns. They're like these giant horns you attach to your car. I think rednecks are into them. I don't know. I didn't know what they were until I did this. Again, we ranked number one, and we actually sold train horns for an entire year from that keyword. So it was cool. Uh, barstools.net, I got us ranked for barstools using this. It would tell you how much booze it would take to kill you. You say, I'm, I'm male, I'm 27, I weigh whatever. Uh, and I could, it would take 45 apple teenies to knock me down. Um, <laughs> So, and, and you know, most of these are focused on links. I'm talking about bunk beds, bar stools. Some of them don't necessarily have to be, like I was saying before. This one I did last week. I don't know if anybody has seen it. It's called 10 Things You Need to Stop Tweeting About. Um, and uh, this got 60,000 retweets. Um, I, I gained uh, 3,000 followers in two days from it. Um, and it's, it's really cool. You just you kind of identify um, what's funny, what's interesting, and, and, and you, you run with it. And this was great, because it didn't even get on Dig or anything. It just threw, through Twitter itself, it actually generated enough traffic that I was happy with the viral campaign. Um, so just a few tips for making link bait. Um, create things that you can look at instantly and know what they are. Don't make the title of your, your link bait if you're creating it. Um, how to break down the socioeconomic factors of the Web 2.0 Twitter sphere, blah, blah, blah. Make it like top 10 ways to be awesome in five seconds. You know, like stuff that people look at and instantly get that buzz, like, oh, that kicks ass. I, I want to read that. Um, like I was saying with bunk beds, if you want to, to create this stuff, I literally make lists of nouns, like um, random stuff, like funny things, weird things, and then I, I sort of connect it to my product, and I try to see if I can come up with something funny, like I did with uh, Velociraptors and bunk beds. Um, top 10 lists do pretty well. They're getting kind of overrun, but if you ever check out dig.com or Reddit um, or some of those other social news sites, you'll see all kinds of stuff like this, like uh, top 10 most intimidating, um, I don't know, male uh, superheroes or top 10 most lame villains or stuff like stuff like that does pretty well. You could do it about your product too. Um, check out, like I said, dig.com for some inspiration. Search for your product name on dig. Cracked.com is a, they have an art, a way they write articles that uh, is really appealing to in viral marketing. They just, they've hit the nail on the head. If you ever read one cracked article, you end up reading like five because they all follow this very, very similar format. Um, and also look at the covers of, of some cheesy magazines like Men's Health or Cosmo. Like I was saying before, these, these headlines like how to get six-pack abs from working out five seconds a day. You know, where you read, it's, it's BS, but you read it and you get that, oh, I, I, can, I can instantly understand that and it's easy. And then if you're a writer or if you, if you have some skill, you can, you, can do, you can do link bait pretty well. But if you have a good graphic designer, a writer, a coder, or someone with 
that extra push, maybe a flash designer, it can, can set you apart from everybody else because anybody can write something. Um, so I'm not saying if you can't do any of these things, you know, you're, you're screwed. It's just it really sets you apart if you can find someone who can. Look on Craigslist for, for writers or artists. Look on threadless.com, the t-shirt site. There's a whole army of artists there creating amazing stuff. If you took them and applied them to a marketing, most of those guys don't know what this stuff is. If they took them and applied it to something like I do, you could, you could do really, really well. Um, don't put your product inside your link bait. So if you have a viral campaign and you're running it, don't say, now that you've read our hilarious comic, like, why don't you buy a vacuum cleaner for $99? You know, like, no one's going no to buy it. That's what this traffic isn't about. This traffic's about uh, getting links to your site, ranking at the engines. So you want to rank at Google, number one, for vacuum cleaners. You don't want to have a viral campaign and have people buy your vacuum cleaners from you. Sort of like a, uh, it's like a, you know, going around to do it rather than actually having them do it. Don't spam. You guys all know this. Don't go to a site and have everyone IM each other and upload it. You probably just get kicked out. Don't spend too much time on it. Um, I found this stuff as a gimmick. It's, it's a quick thing. And, you know, it, it's like if you have a, a room full of 12 people all engineering how to make a piece of link bait, you're going to get some horrible link bait coming out of it. If you have, like, one or two highly creative people who can, who can zone in and just, just bang it out really quickly and, more, more importantly, iterate if it sucks. Like, if it doesn't do well, then they can, they can just make 12 of them. You know, just keep going with it. I've, I've made more quizzes and comics than I can remember. So a lot of the reason, you know, they're funny is just because I've seen what people like and what people don't. And make it look benign. Don't make it look commercial. Make it look like um, your program was just having fun that day. Or make it look like you're a, a blogger, kind of an upstart. Um, more people will link to you that way rather than a commercial product. Promotion. This is a real, a real key part. I, I could actually spend a whole hour talking about just this. Um, there's a ton of these sites. You guys all know what they are. Social media sites like this. Dig, Stumble, and Reddit are the big three. So I'll just focus on those. Um, Dig is the biggest and the baddest. has the most traffic. To get on Dig, you know, write great article titles, have pictures with it. And uh, more importantly, find a power user, someone who uses the site regularly. If you submit yourself, you won't get anywhere with it. Um, Reddit. You want to make it like a conversation. It's a very politically oriented site a lot of the time, but they also they like Reddit to look more like a forum rather than a news site. So, um, for instance, I have a friend who made the zombie game, and um, I wrote a Reddit post titled, I just finished creating my first zombie game. Uh, check it out and tell me, guys, what you think. I didn't make it. I just wrote that as the title. It got on the Reddit homepage, so I was able to get my friend's game on the front page of a, of a, of a really popular website, which is, um, you know, that's great. That's better than some link bait being up there. And StumbleUpon is super fair. It's a great place to start. I don't know if anybody uses it. It's a toolbar you install, and you um, basically send you to random sites on the web. If you just create some killer content and give it a thumbs up on StumbleUpon, they'll send just about anybody traffic. It's not a lot. I mean, it scales up and down, but it's not like Dig or Reddit where it's polarized. Where you either get all or you get nothing. With, with Stumble, you can get 10 visitors. You can get um, a million visitors. It just depends. So, um, so yeah, that, that actually wraps it up. I know it was kind of fast. I had to cover a lot of things. But basically, like I was saying before, you know, SEO is about ranking for keywords. You know, that's how you build your business, sell your product, do whatever it is you're doing. Um, and in order to rank for those keywords, you, you, the way I do it, the way that I found is very effective, is you create a discussion about whatever that is. You get the whole internet to talk to you, you know, talk, talk about you, you know, point to you. And then Google says, oh, I should show these guys. So that's just sort of the core of it. So uh, my Twitter username is Oatmeal. If you guys want to check out more of my comics, quizzes, whatever, uh, my website's MatthewInman.com. Thank you.